the Lord's house. I wish you'd take a hymn book and uh, turn it to page 110. We're going to sing Heaven's Jubilee. Stand with me this morning. I come to worship God. He's worthy. So let's do that today. Everybody sing. Everybody get a book. Turn it to 110. Choir, you do the same. Let's all sing out loud this morning. Here we go. Well, some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me and joys ours to share. What rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise. Hey, for that jubilee yonder in the sky. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting On that happy morning when we all shall gather eyes Oh, what glory, hallelujah When we meet our blessed Savior in the sky Amen, yeah, good singing. Verse yeah. 2 is getting strong. Well, seems that now I almost see all the sainted dead Rising for that jubilee that is just ahead In the twinkling of an eye, change with them to be All the living saints to fly to that jubilee Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting On that happy morning when we all shall gather When with all that heavenly host we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting, on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Praise the Lord, you can be seated. Oh, as Jerry Clower used to say, amen. That's one, that's one of them that gets your breath. And I appreciate God's goodness. I like those songs that, uh, boy, get you thinking about heaven, amen. And uh, knowing us that are born again, bought by the blood of Christ, that's where we're headed. And it won't always be like this. The world's getting darker and, and uh, times are getting harder and, and we're in perilous times. But uh, this is exciting times for the child of God uh, because our redemption draweth nigh. And so we can look up because Jesus is coming. If you don't know the Lord today, if you've never been born again, I'd consider that. I'd think about that because we don't know. The Bible tells us really in Proverbs 27, 1, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day will bring forth. But I'm ready. I hope you are today. Good to see you. Visitors, what a blessing it is to see you. We have some visitors that we visited yesterday. What a blessing that is. And we encourage by that. Praise the Lord. And I do appreciate those that come out for visitations. Good to get it started back yesterday. I think we had about 30, maybe a little more. And we do appreciate that. And uh, them young ones, they like to walk the preacher. And, uh, but they excited. They got zeal. And see, I stay around them because as long as they got zeal, I'll have zeal. And uh, if I pass out on the side of the road, I don't think they'd leave me. Some of y'all older folks probably leave me. Amen. <laughs> but they'd, I believe they'd stay with me. Amen. But uh, we appreciate those that was a part of that. We're good to have, good to have our visitors. Now, we're going to say if you're here for the first time uh, or you've, you've been here a time or two or whatever and you've not yet received a visitor's card, from one of our ushers. Would you slip your hand up so one of our ushers could put a visitor's card in your hand? Uh, Brother Billy right there, we have some. We appreciate all of our first-time visitors. Thank you all so much for being in the service. We appreciate that. If you'd be so kind to fill that card out, the pen is yours to keep. And when the ushers come by with the offering plate, could you drop that off into the offering plate? Or you can put it in my hand after the service, whichever is the easiest for you. And we do appreciate you that are visiting today. Church, thank you for being in your place uh, and you that are watching by means of live stream, we do appreciate you that are watching. We are on Facebook Live. We are on our website, bbclandrum.com. We are on YouTube and a few other things I've never heard of, but we are on them. Amen. So uh, we appreciate those open doors the Lord's given us. 
uh, to get the gospel out. But I do say, if you are physically able and not hindered as far as a real hindrance, you need to be in church, amen, on Sunday, uh, personally, amen. Uh, so we don't, we don't use those avenues as a way to miss coming to church. Uh, we try to get the gospel out, share the word of God, and maybe somebody gets saved, somebody that's out of church may get in or encouraged. Uh, so remember those things today. But we're going to open the service up with prayer, and we do have much to pray for, and, and, and I won't be able to go through the whole list because we have prayer rooms before every service that we name uh, folks' name. But I do want to remember uh, the Steve Reed family. He passed away yesterday. Remember he him at Sister Pebble's stepdad. So, so pray uh, for him, uh, for his family, uh, that Lord give them grace and peace in these days. Also, uh, Sister Norma Cantrell's in the hospital, so remember her. And uh, many in our church family is going through cancer treatments and different things, need prayer. Let's pray for them. Linda Cooper needs prayer today. And again, our prayer list is long, a lot of needs. And our shut-ins, don't forget them. Let's pray for them, that God will bless them. But let's pray for the service today. Folks, I come to worship the Lord. He's worthy. And we want to pray and ask God to touch this service in a mighty, mighty way. Y'all pray for Brother John and them. They're not sick today, but uh, his son, Brother Robert Jarvis, uh, is pastor of Welcome Baptist Church in Union. And he is celebrating his 25th year as pastor there. And they're having a special day. And, of course, uh, he wanted to be there. And I don't blame him. I would, too. Uh, so he'll be back tonight. Some of you may ask for wonder, thinking they're sick. But that's where they are this morning. So they'll be back tonight. Uh, so uh, remember that. It's a great milestone. Our 25th year is coming up in January. Boy, time flies, don't it? And I appreciate what God's done for us here, and I thank God for that. But we're going to open the service up with prayer, and let's pray God's blessings on the service. Praise God's will be done, and the power of God be in, be in the place. I'm going to ask one of our deacons, Brother Mar, you come up here, brother, if you would, and open the service up in prayer, brother. Thank you so much. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful to be in the house of God yes. this morning, Lord. We're looking for a good day here this morning, Lord. Yes. Father, we're needy people here today, Lord, and we need you, Lord. We need the message from the Word of God. I pray that you prepare our hearts, get us ready for that message here today, Lord. Father, we pray for the shut-ins. We pray for those that are sick and unable to be here. Pray for those that's bereaved this morning, Lord. Pray that you just comfort their heart. Give them grace this morning, Lord. And we'll just thank and praise you for all that you do, all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Steve. I appreciate that. Uh, by way of announcement, if you have a child zero to three, uh, we have a nursery. Ladies that are working that nursery, you can go out this door to my left, go to the end of the hall, or this door to my right, go to the end of the hall, or go around the hall, rather, and uh, they'll be there. They'll give you something to buzz you back if they need you, so uh, please use that if you need to. And then uh, we got a couple of special things uh, to mention. Um, if you want to be a part of a Christmas program, there will be a meeting this evening before church at 445. If you want to be a part of a Christmas program, please be here at 445 uh, today before service. And then uh, I need to have a meeting tonight with all the parents and or guardians of children four to eight will meet in the other building in what I call the men's prayer room. And, of course, they have the Bible characters class out there. So if you go straight, take a left, second room on the left. So if you could, if y'all could hang around the night for a few minutes, I want to present a different ministry for, for that age to you. And uh, so uh, please, if you can stay, we'd appreciate that very, very much. It's, it, we really need you to if you can. Uh, so remember that as well. Also, we're going to have an in-house uh, youth meeting uh, Saturday, October 23rd at 5 p.m. And uh, uh, Brother Justin and Brother Jonathan will be preaching. Our young people will be singing. And uh, we'll have fellowship afterward. And this is for the whole church. And, of course, you can invite anybody to come. We'd like to have anybody. So that's Saturday, October 23rd at 5 p.m. Also, see number five, Pastor Appreciation is October 17th. Uh, we don't want to forget that. Amen. But uh, anyway, uh, that's that's something. <laughs> Amen. If you don't take care of yourself, nobody else will. <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's on there. I didn't have it put on there. It's on there. Amen. Uh, any other announcements? Don't forget, youth devotions at 530, prayer rooms at 545, church at 6 p.m. Don't forget church tonight. Looking forward to what the Lord is going to do for us. Amen. If no other announcements, I want you to stand. Our ushers are coming. And you're going to grab that hymn book again, turn to page 57. We're going to sing the Baptist anthem, Amazing Grace. While our ushers are coming, please get your songbook and sing with us. Uh, choir and congregation. If y'all do that, I'd appreciate that. And you give that which belongs to God, and the Lord will bless you for that. Amen. All right, Brother T. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be in your house, Lord. Thank you for what we've already heard from you this morning, Lord. Pray you touch my pastor, Lord, as he comes and brings us the word, Lord. Touch his choir as they sing, Lord. 
I pray, Lord, you help each and every heart today here, Lord. I pray, Lord, you bless this offering we're about to receive. In Jesus' sweet name I pray. Amen. Amen. Page 57, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now.
let's all stand while the choir comes down. Aren't you glad because of Jesus? Hallelujah. You shake hands or speak, do what you got to do. Wave, whatever. Amen. God walks the dark hills, the ways, the byways. He walks through the billows of life's troubled sea. He walks through the cold, dark night, shadows of midnight. God walks the dark hills just to guide you and me. God walks the dark hills to guide my footsteps. He walks everywhere by night and by day. On down the highway God walks the dark hills Just to show me the way God walks in the storm the rain and the sunshine He walks on the billows Through glimmering light He walks up the mountain High cross rivers through valleys God walks the dark hills Cause He loves you and me God walks the dark hills to guide my footsteps. He walks everywhere by night and by day. He walks in the silence on down the highway. God walks the dark hills just to show me the way he walks in the silence on down the highway god walks the dark hills just to show me the way
Just want to thank the Lord for saving me. I'd had it on my mind to sing another song. and I know we've sang this song a lot, but just kind of felt that the Lord was leading me to sing this today. I thank the Lord for the fact that He saved me. I thank the fact that when He saved me, I was free from the condemnation of sin, that I can live my life free, not free to do it the way I want to do it, not free to do the way the things that I want to do, but the fact that I'm free from the punishment that should have been mine, from the punishment that awful place that we all dread to talk about, that place called hell. But he loved me enough that he died for me on an old rugged cross, something that nobody else would do. But he loved me enough, y'all, that he set me free. So y'all pray for us this morning. Lock me up in a prison and throw away the key. Take away the vision from these eyes that now now can see deprive me of the food I eat and even bind my hands and my feet but as long as I know Jesus then I can still go free That I, I could still go free What kind of man Would reach down his hand And do this for me Not fit to kill Then a man on the cross Puts me in his will And says that I, I could still go free I never could quite understand why a king would want to leave his throne to don the robe of an earthly man feel the pain of flesh flesh and bone then to later try a lonely path that led to Calvary where the blood red stains they broke off all my chains that I could still go free that I, I could still go free what kind of man would reach down his hand and do this for me Not fit 
to kill Then a man, man on the cross Puts me in his will And says that I could still go shows him the scars in his hands and his side what kind of man embraces the doubter lovingly drawing them near I don't have to wonder if I've been accepted he said all oh, the worry and fear at Calvary for someone like me his name was Peter he knew him he loved him but oh how he failed him that night he promised Jesus that he'd never leave him he'd willingly the trial he stood by the fire he denied him three times what kind of man pours out his mercy on someone who's so close and falls with no way to earn it no way to deserve it forgive
mercy on someone who stumbles and falls with no way to earn it no way to deserve it forgiveness still came after all at calvary Would suffer in the shame and disgrace Hang on a cross, despised and rejected Willing to die in my place at Calvary His name was Thomas, for three years he followed, he saw every wonder and sign. They say he is risen, that his grave is empty, but he can't believe he's alive. Now standing before him, Jesus shows him the scars in his hands and his side. What kind of man embraces the doubter, lovingly drawing them near? I don't have to wonder if I've been accepted. You said all the worry and fear at Calvary for someone like me. on someone who stumbles and falls with no way to earn it no way to deserve it forgiveness still came after all at Calvary I've been Barabbas, the guilty set free, and I have been Thomas, the doubter redeemed, and I have been Peter, yes I've been all three. What kind of man bleeds for the worthless and saves him whatever it takes? What kind of man would rescue the sinner and all her amazing grace at Calvary for someone like me? For someone like me? Praise the Lord. John you enjoy good singing today? I do appreciate that. Of course, when folks start coming to the altar during our song service, we keep going. Uh, we want them to do what the Lord's bidding their heart to do. Aren't you glad for an altar? 
I'm thankful for a place for God's people. Do you understand? Uh, those that are unsaved, sinners can come to an altar and get saved. Uh, we, we thank God for that. But the altar was instituted for God's people. Amen. It's a place of sacrifice in the Old Testament. It's a place of surrender here. It's a place to get help, get encouragement, get strength. Amen. Don't ever be ashamed to use the altar. If you ever get ashamed to use the altar, you've got a pride problem. And uh, pride will keep you from using the altar. Amen. We don't need that. Uh, we all, and I know I say this a lot. Go ahead and turn to uh, Exodus 32. Uh, we all come in here and we, we smile and we fellowship and we laugh and we have a good time of fellowship and talking and we come in to worship. But everybody here came in this church building today with a problem. We all got baggage. We all got, we all got things uh, that we wish were better about our own selves. Uh, when none of us have arrived, Paul said it. The best Christian outside of Christ in the Bible, Paul said, I count not myself to have apprehended. Paul said, that what it means, that word apprehended, he said, I've not arrived. But he said, I do press toward the mark for the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. So we all got problems. None of us are perfect. Amen. But we're, but we're pressing toward. Uh, saying I'm not perfect doesn't mean I don't have responsibility. Everybody all right with that? I'm not perfect, but I have responsibility, and, I have, and, I, and, and the Holy Spirit lives within me to want me to try to be like Christ every day. But yet I fail. Brother Bud's devotion this morning before Sunday school, I do fail. But aren't you glad? If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But if you don't confess your sin, you can't get forgiven for them. Amen. But if you'll confess them, He'll forgive you for them. Amen. All right, that's message number one. Won't charge you no extra for that. Uh, Exodus chapter number 32, please. Exodus chapter number 32. If you give me 30 minutes, uh, if you give me 30 minutes, I'll take 35 minutes and we'll all get along. All right? Uh, Exodus chapter number 32, verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us, for as for this Moses, uh, you see the sarcasm in that, for this Moses, well, there ain't but one, uh, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what, what he is, what has become, what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all, the, and all the people break off the ear, golden earrings uh, which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them in, at their hand and fashioned it uh, with a graving tool after he had made it a molded calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Uh, that golden calf didn't bring them nowhere. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. You can't, you, can't, <laughs> you can't do anything to honor God while you're worshiping idols. Do you see the contradiction? I mean, Aaron done lost his mind. Uh, I mean, here they, he just made a golden calf. We're going to worship the golden calf. And he said, we're going to have a feast to the Lord. Uh, you, hey, let me tell you all something, folks, and I'm telling it to preacher too. You can't serve the devil and worship God. Hello? We can't serve Satan and worship the Lord. Uh, the Bible said God is a jealous God. Uh, that's a godly, holy jealousy. Uh, amen. The only one who has a right to be a jealous God is the God of heaven. Amen. He has rights to us. We're purchased possessions through the blood of Christ. And so we see the contradiction. And folks, if you're not careful as God's people, uh, you'll try to live for Satan during the week, come into worship, and your whole life will begin to contradict itself. Amen. You'll just run around like a dog chasing its tail. You're not going to get anywhere. And you go, hey, all you're going to be is dizzy. All you're going to be is confused. Everybody all right? Amen. I wish I could preach on heaven. But i got to preach this. Thank you, Brother Steve. And they rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people, listen, sat down to eat and to drink, listen, and rose up to play. See, what, what we see here, uh, they, wanted, they wanted the ungodly. 
But yet they wanted enough God mixed in it, I guess, to ease their conscience. And so they had their feast as they were thinking, uh, as under the Lord. But it's, hey, they wanted to hurry up and get through with that so they could eat and drink and play. Now, I was going to read, and I probably still will. Y'all bear with me, uh, please, if you would. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 10, we have here, uh, let me read moreover, brethren, I would not that you be, should be ignorant how that all our fathers were uh, under the cloud and all passed through the sea, were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, drank the same spiritual drink, for, the, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. And said, but with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now listen to these. Now these things were our examples. To the intent, we should not lust after evil, uh, evil things as they lusted after. Now look in verse number, uh, let's see here. Uh, I can't, I can't find it, but it, it, it gives us that same, it gives us that same analogy how they rose, uh, rose up uh, to play, and God shows us that these things in the Old Testament they're put in the church epistles for our examples. For you and I to see, see what's, what's happening in the church age, and Paul was bringing this out, that history was repeating itself in the negative. And the more I live upon this earth, uh, I'm seeing more and more, and of course, it, I just didn't start seeing it, but the older I get and the, the longer I live, I see more and more and more that God's people just want enough God to say they have Him. We're not concerned with separation. We're not concerned with living holy. We're not concerned with sinners. We're not concerned with giving the gospel. We're not concerned with well, well, being set apart for the glory of God. We're not concerned in how we look. We're not concerned in things we like. We, we, we just want enough God to ease our conscience because we have such, we have such Christianity today that we just ain't going to offend nobody. And so now, and I, mean, I think I mentioned this last week, now all you have to do uh, is don't like a message one preacher preaches. You can go a mile or two down the road. And you can find somebody that's going to preach exactly how you want it that's not going to get in your pee pad. That's not gonna. That's not gonna bother you. You know, hey, you're gonna get to go home. Ain't nobody gonna be mad. Preach about what the preacher preached. Ain't nobody gonna be fussing about it. Ain't nobody gonna. Hey, if they gonna be peaceful. And you know what you're gonna tell people? Well, we left over there because oh, they tried to keep us under the law. We felt like we was in bondage, folks. Hey, Jesus set me free. And because he paid the price, that song they just sang, what kind of man would do all this for us? Amen. Oh, I owe him. I'll never repay him. I know that. But oh, how I owe him. Amen. Now I want to preach today. If God will help me, I'm going to get in this message because I've run a rabbit long enough. On they rose up to play. They rose up to play. Now, we talk about that word place in the Bible. It's in the Bible right here in the text. It's in the New Testament. When it's given the example or referring back to this text, the word play. Now, uh, Webster's 18-whatever dictionary, it, the word play means to use any exercise for pleasure, recreation, to sport, or to frolic. Again, Paul said this to Timothy. He said about the last days, men shall be lovers, uh, men shall be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And we, we have that today in a nutshell where God's people, folks, I understand this is the nation of the Jews, the nation, but they did in the Old Testament represent the people of God. And we that are saved, we are the people of God. And these are the people of God that said, look, we want we want we want we want an idol. We want something that's going to suit our fancy, but yet uh, we want to put God in the midst of it. 
They, I mean, they made a golden calf, but they still said, we're going to offer sacrifices to God. You know what they said? We're going to live like hell, but we're going to church Sunday. And that's going to make everything all right. Everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be dandy. We're going, we're going, to, we're going to go out and we're going, to, we're going to go to the bar. We're going, to, we, we, we're going to commit fornication. Or we're going to live in lasciviousness. We're going to, hey, everybody okay? Hey, Amen. You done here now, you might as well listen. Uh, we, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do all this, and I'm gonna commit adultery, and I'm gonna smoke dope, and I, and, I, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna lie, I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna steal, I'm gonna live this wicked as I can, but I'm going to church Sunday. Now, don't get me wrong, you need to go to church on Sunday, but don't use going to church on Sunday as a well, it's all right. God loves me, folks. He loves you regardless. But if you belong to Him, He's going to show you how much He loves you. Yes, There's times growing up, my daddy showed me just how much He loved me. He loved me enough to quit me. He loved me enough to correct me. He loved me enough hey, hey, uh, to tan my hide. I know that's foreign, probably illegal in some states, but it's still the Bible. The Lord, hey, He told us in the book of Hebrews, I, I want to, hey, I chasten those that I love. You know what He said? Those I don't love, uh, can I say this? Well, God loves everybody. Those that are not His children, He said, I don't touch them. I don't touch them. I don't correct them. I, I don't give them any advice. I don't. Now, now, when they become my children, then they're my sons and they're my daughters, and, and I want to, I want to raise them right. And so, discipline is part of that. Israel saw what discipline was. If you 50 and up, you know what it is. There was a day, and I'm, I don't know why I'm running this rap. There was a day, it was like this. Boy, you get a whooping at school, you get another and you get home. That's why I was complete silence. It wasn't none of this. The teacher whooped me and I didn't do nothing. Oh, my baby, I can't believe that. Let's go. My mom and daddy just wouldn't do that. I guess they was crazy. They look at me, well, what'd you do? I didn't do nothing. They didn't paddle you for nothing. I promise I ain't do nothing. Quit lying. You can make it worse. Then you spill your guts. So, as Christians, if you're born again, saved, if you're God's child, we cannot say, well, I want my golden calf, and I want God to. The Lord was surely wasn't pleased with that, and many of them lost their life because of it. There is a sin unto death for the child of God. Preacher, what is that? What do you mean? If you're a child of God and you keep mocking God with a wicked lifestyle without repentance, He'll put you in an early grave. There is a sin unto death. That's what the Bible said. Man, I wish I could preach on heaven and grace. But this is in the Bible too. This is much the truth of John 3, 16. Amen. 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 This stuff will help you. Amen. It's like a shot of penicillin. I don't even know if I can give penicillin now. I've had enough penicillin in me. If it hurt you, I'd have been dead a long time ago. But it'll help you. Now, let me get to the message. Now, I want you to notice their actions leading up to verse number 6. They were a twofold lacking. Now we see that in verse number one. Everybody hang on, we may not get any farther than this. But I'm not going to wear out the saints. I want you to be listening to the whole message, even if I had to pick it up tonight. There was a twofold lacking in verse number one. Number one, they lacked spiritual activity. In verse number one, notice it now. He said, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. They had a meeting. 
and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is become of him. So now we have people, they're sitting there. Folks, sometimes we have to wait on God. God was giving Moses something great, the law, Amen. the Ten Commandments. God was doing something personal for them. And He was about to reveal something great to them. But you know what? They sat there doing nothing. They sat there idle. And the more they got to thinking, the, hey, as, as, as the old saying goes, idle's hands, the devil's workshop. They weren't staying busy praying. They weren't staying busy worshiping God. They weren't staying busy thanking God. They weren't staying busy in any kind of spiritual activity. And the next thing you know, the devil got a hold of their mind. See a lot of that, especially in these days. Remember why David, King David, was napping while the others were fighting, and it got him in trouble. Got him in trouble. He committed adultery, and then had then had Bathsheba, uh, her husband, killed on in the battle. If he'd have been where he's supposed to be, active in the fight, that wouldn't have ever happened. And so they had a lack of spiritual activity. I'm going to say something to you. If, if you have no spiritual activity outside of coming to church on Sunday, you're going to get in trouble. I'd get in trouble. If you have no prayer life, if you have no Bible reading, if you have, if, if you have no kind of church life, no kind of spiritual walk, no, no kind of spiritual fellowship, if, you have, if, if all you got is Sunday morning church, and, I, and thank God for that. Don't stop that. I'm trying to get you to add to that, not, not stop it. But, but we see Israel here, the first thing got them in trouble, hey, they, they lack spiritual activity. It's not a time to quit everything. It's a time to do more. Amen. They had a lack of spiritual activity. Now, here's one you probably won't like, but it's the truth. They had a lack of uh, spiritual authority. They had a lack of spiritual activity. They had a lack of spiritual authority. Uh, preacher, what are you trying to say? Well, Moses was delayed. Moses was on God's clock, not theirs. But in them, I'm tired of waiting on him. I'm tired of fooling this Moses. They're already, they're already against the man of God. They're already against him. And so now they got together and the majority, they're ready to vote him out. That's exactly what they're doing. This Moses, this man that led us, we ain't fooling with him anymore. Look at look how he's doing. He's wasting our time. But See, lack of spiritual activity, lack of spiritual mindset, lack of spiritual discernment. And so now they, they, they lack spiritual authority. See, they, 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 got, they got aggravated at Moses, they lost respect for Moses, but one thing they could not deny. Moses' preaching and his presence kept them straight. Moses, that's why you need a preacher in your life. Not that we're perfect. Moses wasn't perfect. Well, I can prove Moses wasn't perfect. He lost his temper and couldn't go to the promised land. But he was the one God chose to be the spokesman and the leader of the people. I'm not preaching this to my own whistle. It's just the fact. God has set it up this way that we as God's people need a spiritual leader. That's why he puts pastors in churches and puts you in those churches. And if you don't have any respect for the leadership and, and, and you don't have any, well, I just, are we tired of following him and we don't want that, we don't want this, we don't want the other, you're in trouble. You're headed for trouble. You're headed for a bad day. Amen. You're headed for a bad day. So they had a twofold lacking. They lacked spiritual activity, they lacked spiritual authority. And, and we see, let's, let me run through this quick outline. We see here there's three there's three critical things that's happening here. And we see history repeating itself today. Now, I've left out a bunch of this. i have running through this, trying my best to catch what the Spirit of God wants me to say. There's three critical areas that they turned into a game. See, when you play, what do you say? Do you want to play a game? Playing and game go together. So they, they sat to eat and drink and rose up to play. 
A lot of Christians were playing. We're all about recreation. We're all about, we all, and folks, playing a game doesn't do, in itself is not wrong. But if that's what our life consists of is playing, then it's wrong. And they had three critical errors that they made a game out of. If you notice verse number two, their, tr- their child training became a game. We see critical me- their critical methods of trial- child training. In verse number two, And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, of your- and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. What's, what, what, what I see here, I see a parent that's not right with God, and I see her children following that. Y'all see that? Pretty clear. They failed to realize the example they were setting before their children. Let me ask you a quick question. Are we serious about the life we're living in front of our children? Do we as parents, oh me, realize what we do in moderation, our children would do in excess? Let me repeat. What we do as parents, do we realize what we do in moderation, our children would do in excess? It's a rarity. I didn't say it didn't happen. I said it's a rarity that young people are more involved in ministry than their parents are. You know what I see when I see parents quitting on God? I see their children quitting on God. I do. When when, when I see parents quit serving the Lord, I see children not serving the Lord. Come on. That's that's why why when we have this visitation, we're including our youth now. And folks, don't get me wrong, this preacher's tired. Them young ones say, are we going to eat now? That's all I need to hear. But I see parents bringing them in here. Parents has got excited about it. Now their babies are excited about it. If you're, if you're, if you're really concerned with your children serving God long term, you need to keep serving God today you keep serving God you keep serving God now again I know this, this, this is probably the average I didn't say it happened every time now, please understand that but I know a man used to, used to have a, a, a well known ministry everybody here we support it everybody here knows about it everybody here if I call, if I call his name you know it it don't matter it's been years ago his kids was done grown, married. And I say this in fear and trembling, not judging anybody, not criticizing anybody, not belittling anybody. But for the grace of God, I'm still here preaching today. Don't ever, don't ever think that I'm belittling anybody. I love people. I thank God for repentance. I thank God for restoration. I'm glad, folks, hey, if you're on the wrong road, God allows you turns every time. Amen. Don't ever... Don't ever take anything I preach as somebody that's cold, hard-hearted, and judgmental. That's not me, but I will preach the truth Amen. as it applies to all of us. This man, a thriving ministry, thriving ministry, he ran off, shipwrecked his ministry, shipwrecked his ministry. And I've seen all three of his children end up in messes. It broke down, even though they were grown, and I know they were even probably out of his house, but I've seen, I've seen when he quit, they all started dropping. He was such a pivotal example in their lives, and all of a sudden, their example fell. Folks, that's why I be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary of the devil. Oh God, thank you for helping me this morning. Oh, see, I'm not. I'm not I, when I preach this kind of stuff, I get I get afraid because I understand I'm in this flesh, and I understand 
One wrong move, one wrong decision, and somebody else will be preaching about me. So I say this in fear and trembling and love and admonition. And this man's got right with God since then. He's, I mean, he may not, he may not be in the ministry, but God's using his testimony now to help other people. Amen. See what God, God good. Hey, preacher, I've made so many messes. God take care of it. We may have a scar. We have to, we have to, we have to shine here and there. We may have some regrets and, and oh my, some, 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 some nights we cry. But God's still good. Amen. And God still forgives. And God still can use you. Amen. Preacher, I don't think God can use me anymore. Well, if He can't, why are you still here? What do you mean, preacher? Here in the church? No, here on earth. What are you saying, preacher? Your breath's still in God's hands and He hadn't killed you yet. He ain't took you home yet. That tends to make me think that you might get right with God and you ought to use you again. See, so we, we ain't coming in here with a, with, a, with a judgmental, pharisaical spirit, but yet we still, we still bound to preach the truth. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, one of, their, one of their biggest mistakes in this text is that they begin to play child training was a game to them. They weren't thinking about, you know, if we go against the man of God and we go against God and we murmur and, and we turn our back on what is right and, and we've seen what God's done in our lives, how He's took us from bondage to freedom, how He parted the Red Sea for us, how He's fed us with manna and, and, and quail and all the, if we turn our back on all of that. See, they had that mentality. It ain't about what God's done for us, but what has He done for us lately? And they turn, turn their back on all of that. They didn't think about them babies behind them. Them babies behind them. I'm trying my best to preach this message, but God keeps taking me here and there. My mom and dad got saved, and I've heard all this. I was between two and three years old. Been in church ever since. But growing up in their household, do y'all know, y'all, can I tell y'all the basic reason I went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night? Because they made me. It wouldn't have bothered me a bit if daddy and mama said, we're not going to church Sunday. I would have said, all right. But they went. They said, oh, by the way, you going. Well, I just don't want my baby. I don't want to force them to go to church. It, it'll give them a complex. Well, in the morning when they don't want to go to school, don't make them because it might give them a complex. The only complex I had is when I walked in church doing like that. <laughs> I encourage you, daddy, to start that back and see what happens. You'd be surprised. Amen. Daddy, you are going to give account for that. Yes, sir. Amen. You are going to give account for that. It's amazed me. You know, the, the, carnal, the carnal mind, the fleshly mind will say, you know what, if I, if, I, if I discipline my child, I'm talking about beating your child. I walk up on you beating your child, you're going to have two people to beat. You understand what I'm saying? We don't, we don't, we don't condone child abuse around here. In any form, but we do we do as a biblical way of discipline, Amen. the chastening rod. Right. God even designed a special place. He even padded it, padded it, did it, it. Amen. Amen. Good. During those times, I was thankful them third heavens of beans and taters. It padded it even more. <laughs> but I, imagine, I can't imagine what I'd be without it I can't, Im- I can't imagine how I would behave at school at the do- I, I would say Walmart didn't exist Roses, Sky City, Kmart the dime store, the dollar store 
T.J. and Y. Folks, I've done almost 10 years before I walked in Westgate Mall. But anyway, even in church, I can't imagine what, what, kind, what kind of trouble I'd put my authority in around me had I had no discipline. If all I, if all I, could, if all I could do was play, do what I wanted to do. The children of Israel, they had that mindset, and, and now they are rearing their children. Their children are following them, and now their child training has become a game. There's nobody that believes that, that, that our children will get a good education and, and get a good job, and, and, and hopefully God will call them into ministries, and, and if not, we need Christian mechanics and doctors and lawyers and, 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 and all that stuff. Uh, we, we, all that's very, 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 very important. But there's nothing more important than you putting your child in a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church and show them how to serve God. Amen. Nothing's more important than that. Not one thing is more important than that. Child training became a game. Secondly, their Christianity became a game. See, they had critical methods... They had a carnal means. See, in verse 1, you'll see they wanted to be led, just not God's way. See, they wanted the God, but just not the God. Can I say something to you? If the big G God's not your God, there's still, there's still a little G God that's directing your life. They were willing to give away their gold, but only for their little G God, verse 3. They were willing to rise up early but not for the God of heaven. Are you listening to me? And with that mindset, with that mentality, if you notice verse 17 and 18, when Moses coming down, he heard a racket, he thought, he thought war had broke out. No, they were, they were partying. Their music done got carnal and worldly. In verse 25, not only their music got wicked, but in verse 25, their modesty got wicked. And when Moses saw the people, what were they? They were naked. See, when, when child training becomes a game, the Christianity becomes a game, and everything falls apart. Right. Lastly, and all God's people say, Whew. I'm glad you're getting that out of your system, preacher. Their child training was a game. Their Christianity was a game. Their concern was a game. Their carefree mindset. In verse number 19, verse number 19, the Bible says this, And it came to pass as soon as the... As soon as, excuse me. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh to the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing and Moses' anger waxed hot and he cast the... He, and, he, and he cast the tables out of his hand and break them beneath the mount. Well, see, when the whole crowd is partying, got their golden calf, naked, I mean, folks, I'm not trying to be, be insensitive or disrespectful in a mixed congregation, but it's a mess. It was a mess. They were parting. They were, I mean, these were the people of God. These were the people God opened a sea for. They're parting. They, they having a time, man. And only one is concerned about that. Out of the whole bunch, Moses was the only one that was concerned. Folks, I'm afraid that's what's happened to the church. It's getting fewer and fewer and fewer that are concerned about holiness and honoring the Lord with our lives and living right. It's getting fewer and fewer and fewer. Fewer, fewer, and fewer. Here Moses was all by himself. And he lost it. Now, I, I don't have any verses for this, so this is my opinion. There's probably some of them said, 
standing there, stoned out of their mind. God's people now, stoned out of their mind, naked, partying. I mean, crazy. You a preacher, and you lost your temper. It's not what you said. It's how you said. I feel you, Moses. Oh, how I feel you, Moses. You should have come down and coddled us in your arms. It's okay. It wasn't okay. It was in direct defiance and rebellion against God. And Moses took that personal. It wasn't, it wasn't he was against them personally. He was against them being against the God of heaven. Amen. I just come off the mountain. God doing something special for us. God giving us something he wasn't giving nobody else. God doing something for us he wasn't doing for nobody else. God called us out of the year of the Chaldeans and made us a great nation. And he's been good to us. Look how he supplied. Look, look. And I come down off the mountain with God with something for you from him. And that's how y'all live it. So next time your preacher gets a little angry, tell him a little slack. Amen. He's not against you. Amen. He's just against what the devil's doing. Yes, sir. Good. He don't think he's better than you. He don't, think, he don't think he's more spiritual than you. He just hates to see what the devil's doing. Amen. Amen. They rose up to play. What are we rising up to do? God help us. Let's all stand. I'm done. I'm going to cut it off right there. Thank you for your patience. I went over what I said. I'm sorry. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Miss Lisa's coming. The altar is open. Folks are on their way to the altar. If you need to come, heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Again, thank you for your patience this morning. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking on but me and the Lord. While you search your own heart, nobody can see you but me and the Lord. Folks are already on the altar. Thank you for the response. Maybe you're here this morning, you say, Preacher, Preacher, I've never accepted Christ as my Savior. If I died today, Preacher, I don't know if I'd go to heaven. Preacher, would you pray for me? Oh, the one honest heart would slip their hand up and say, Preacher, I'm just not sure that I'm ready to meet the Lord. Would you pray for me? Oh, the one honest heart. Preacher, I'm just not sure I'm saved. Would you pray for me? If you know you're born again, you're ready to meet the Lord, can I see your hand? Thank you. If you couldn't raise your hand today, I wish you'd come. We love you. God loved you more. He sent Jesus to die for you. If you'll come, if you're a man, we'll have a man. If you're a lady, we have a lady. Meet you here with the Bible and help you. We love you. We're on your side. There's a day I had to do that too, see, and others that are born again. If you'll come, what a blessing. Maybe you're here today say, Preacher, I'm one of God's children. I know I'm saved. I know I'm born again. But the Spirit of God's touched me, Preacher, today and shown me some things and me and God knows what they are. I just want you to pray for me when you get along. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I see hands all over. God bless you. My hands up. I need prayer, church. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else preach? God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else preach? Would you pray for me? God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. While these folks are praying, you can look this way. As long as someone's praying, we'll keep the altar call going. So this is your time.